Hi, this is Michael Becker, and welcome to this Tinderbox lesson. Uh, with me today is Tom Diaz. Tom, thank you very much for joining us. So glad to be here, Michael. So Tom, like me, is an avid Tinderboxer. Um, we're completely in love with this tool and all that it can do, and really how it, as you've seen through the other videos that we've had, uh, fundamentally transform your work. I mean, it's a it's a really really powerful tool to help you collect knowledge, curate that knowledge create new knowledge for yourself and then contribute that to the world. And it doesn't have to be just for writers uh, or academics, um, or uh, it can be for hardcore research as well as for business applications. And today, what we wanted to dig into is to show you how to start doing some industry mapping. Um, so Tom, if you wouldn't mind, uh, can you share with us uh, kind of what you're thinking, the type of problem you're gonna be solved you wanna have solved? And then uh, our, our goal then today is once we hear what kind of um, Tom's problem is, is we want to generate a working session and actually develop from scratch a working Tinderbox file. Um, that's the goal. And so let's see how successful we are at it. Yeah. Sounds great, Michael. You know, I, I've, I've kind of fell in love with kind of your description of how you use Tinderbox where you have all this content and, and that content remains yours. And, and all of a sudden you publish out these reports and I really resonated with me because I, I didn't think of it like that. And so the problem that I, I was thinking about and the reason, you know, kind of you and I met this week is, is because I, I'm, a, I'm a doctor, I'm, I'm a researcher, healthcare you know, researcher. And, you know, a lot of times when I'm researching a topic, there's always companies that pop up, there's products that pop up. And so even though, you know, you're using it in a very, you know, heavy, heavy duty way from an industry analysis, writing a book perspective, I thought it'd be nice to have a lightweight version. So on the fly that as, as these, um, as these topics come up, it'd be a very easy way to plug in companies and products and what they do use cases and things of that sort that you talked about earlier. Okay. So in other words, what you're talking about and, and, and hearkening back to what you're, what you're referring to is, you know, as a consultant, what I found is at the end of the day, what my clients want is their output. They want some form of report or industry analysis or, uh, or, or resource. And, and the challenge is if in the most stereotypical way, when you go about doing this process, you would start with your output software, you'd start with an Excel or a PowerPoint and you'd work in that. Um, and invariably, as a consultant, your, uh, your client owns your output, but they don't necessarily own your input. And so what I found is reversing the, the methodology and that I don't work in the output, I work in my input. And therefore, I own the input and the client then can have as much as the output as they want. But what that output is, is defined by my choice. Uh, and so I really find that to be a, an incredibly effective way, as you pointed out, in, in, in looking at the world, um, because it allows us to actually build an asset for ourselves, you know, much like our private notes or our, our individual asset. When you're applying that to work, these notes and this multidimensional methodology of pulling your knowledge together with Tinderbox becomes this incredibly valuable asset that you can leverage down the road. And if you think about it in the context of the asset, it will give you just a little bit much more of that impetus to spend time on curating the input just enough so that is, there is value down the road. You're not cutting corners at the very beginning where really the greatest value generation is, uh, is, is uh, point is where it happens. Um, so with that in mind, based on what I heard you just say, what you wanna do is you wanna build a, basically an, a, a research file that you can use to be able to track and monitor and manage basically your industry, you know, you know and, 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 and notes that you want to have with your industry. Did I get that right? Yeah, that, that, that's exactly right. So, you know, just an example. So, you know, COVID-19. So, you know, it's a big, big, broad topic. So when you talk about the vaccines and you talk about vendors, for example, there's lots of vendors that are, that are going to start distributing the vaccine. So keeping track of those vendors, kind of what they use it, you know, kind of what area, geographic area, use cases. That would be an example in my industry, but, you know, this, this use case is, is, can be, you know, in, in, in anybody's world. So, you know, the, in, in essence, that's exactly what, you know, I was thinking about. Okay. Why don't you keep talking? What other things are important to you? Well, you know, I, I think this whole idea about discovery, so you start with notes, right? And you know, you're writing down summaries and you're writing down impressions and you're writing down your own notes. And then all of a sudden, 
you know, after the fact, you don't really go into it as, as, you know, wanting to do an industry analysis, but it just kind of develops and kind of, kind of works its way through. So, you know, looking at it from, from that perspective, it, it's just like, man, I wish I put a little bit more forethought on the front end of it. So I could already have this, but, but that doesn't always happen. So starting very simple and then, and then growing into an industry map, a very simple one would, okay. would be what I'd be after. Okay. So let's talk about it. So as you were talking, some, some thoughts were you know percolating in our, in, in my head and I'm not sharing the screen. So that's an unfortunate thing. Let me go ahead and do this. So as you were talking, um, I started taking some notes, right? So I opened up, a, uh, I quickly opened up a Tinderbox file and I said, COVID-19, geography, vaccine, uh, organization, general notes, use cases, impressions, uh, industry analysis, summaries, what, what other things would you be wanting to track? You know, I think that's a great start. You know, let, let's just start there. Make it real simple. How about products? What about features of those products? What about benefits of those products, right? So these are all the kinds of things that if you're thinking about an, uh, uh, you know, pulling together an, you know, an industry map or insights or research, um, those are general topics that you'd want to do it. And for those that are new to this, basically what I did is I, I, I clicked new. And uh, I'm sorry, I wasn't sharing screen when, when you started that. And I just started typing, you know, COVID, right? General notes. And when you set, when you set up Tinderbox, once you've done typed a note, if you hit enter and then you enter again, it automatically creates you a new note. Um, so that's kind of a little trick uh, for you to think about. So that kind of tells you how I started this file. And frankly, that's a lot of the ways, like a lot of the, uh, a lot of the ways my my Tinderbox files start, right? Is just opening up a file and starting to take notes. So let's go ahead and do something really quick. We're gonna go ahead and save this file, and we'll drop it in my. Oh, I can drop it in my Pandocs test file. That's fine. That's fine. So we're gonna say industry mapping, mapping with Tom Diaz, and we'll call this TBX lesson. Great, and I will, all right, so we've got our file saved. That's obviously something you wanna do and we've started to create some notes. So now what we wanna do as you're thinking about through some of your analysis and ideas, these are become more like containers or buckets, right? So let's go ahead and organize it in map view. And when you're doing this initial brainstorming, I find uh, the map view to be really effective as, as you get more uh, organized and more incrementally formalized, then outline view starts working really, really, really well. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll talk, uh, organization is one thing. Um, we've got a list of products is another. Um, we're just gonna kind of get these containers all into one please. Now products have features. So we'll go ahead and put that over here and features have benefits, okay. And then invariably, just from a thought process, I might say that these features and products eventually somehow um, you know, interact with use cases, right? So you take features and products and actually more importantly, and again, this is from an incremental formalization perspective. Maybe I don't like that. Actually features and products don't necessarily have, uh, benefits don't have use cases, but products have use cases, right? You know, products will solve particular use cases. Um, now you may have uh, the summaries might be a, a place where we have summaries of notes. Here might be another bucket where you're just going to drop in general notes. Okay, we'll move that to the side a little bit. Um, the you know this is a title maybe for our overall map is industry analysis. You know this idea of having impressions may be another area for general notes and yeah you know, now we're starting to get some interesting things. So like where does this stuff go? So these are like um, topic areas that we may want to uh, refer to or like keywords, for example, and geography very well may be like regions um, or per uh, particular countries. So as we start thinking about geography, maybe there's North America, uh, EMEA, uh, APAC, TAM, right? So you have, um, from a notes perspective, you've got some geographical, uh, you know, we'll call these regions. All right, and we're just gonna go ahead and drop those regions in there. Okay, and then, uh, and then you may start listing countries too, like United States. Oops, hang on, United States. Uh, and we'll say 
United Kingdom. How about, whoops, how about France? What about Japan, right? And you can then ultimately list a bunch of, a, a bunch of countries as well. And so let's go ahead and now call these countries. Because if you think about it, when you have an organization, you have a, a, an organization invariably is going, its headquarters will be in a country, right? Products may be distributed in a region. So having those kind of distinctions for your uh, industry analysis becomes really helpful. So we'll go ahead and drop those notes in. Okay. And again, right now we're not really overly formalizing this. We're just kind of brainstorming. So from a geography perspective, uh, essentially what we've now just done is we've started to you know, build out in our map. Um, this will be kind of like our lookup table. So we're going to be looking up regions or geographies that we want to then be able to apply into other, into other notes. Um, now we want to think about like COVID. So COVID-19 or vaccine, maybe these are um, key, or, you know, key terms or um, key terms or, or, or key words or definitions or something of that nature. So maybe these are keywords that we want to be tracking. Okay, and so you know, and so as you're bringing up more keywords um, and you're brainstorming, you can start just you know the other way. To, the, another way to refer to that might be topics, right? So a keyword could be also be topics. So maybe that might even be the better way to talk about it now because uh, keyword, you know, the the topics that we want to be tracking for this industry um, or that are might related to that uh, product. Because if you think about it, this product might be related to both vaccine and COVID nineteen. But that, you know, as you get into more healthcare, uh, there might be general flu, right? Um, or there could be, you know, Ebola, right? You know, and so these could become all the different types of topics. And that topic vaccine could be related to a, an Ebola uh, a vaccine, to a flu vaccine, or to a COVID-19 vaccine, right? So you kind of, those are just, that's where you could start brainstorming thoughts and ideas um, as you're thinking about the industry analysis. So are, we, are you with me so far? Yes, no, that's perfect. Okay, now, um, can, why don't we, for this, because I don't know your industry, why don't you uh, just throw out some company names? Well, let's just, let's just uh, you know, maybe, maybe pharmacies would be, would, you know, just talk in general terms of. All right, uh, that's, another, that's another categorical model. So it's, uh, it's uh, organizational type. Yeah. Right? So there are different types of um, organization types, right? There are... Um, or better yet, maybe we don't call them that, we call them sectors. So there's, uh, you know, pharmaceutical, uh, manufacturers, uh, what, what, other, what other sectors are, are it? so maybe, maybe it's not, maybe this is, is it sector or market type or how would you, you know, let's start keep going down the path. You were talking pharmacy. Yeah. You know, yeah, I would, you know, there's, there's, uh, you know, these, these hubs that are these big site hubs that are, that are giving the, the vaccine. So, you know, there's, there's the health departments that are, that are giving the vaccine. So, you know, these are all the organizations, if you will, the distribution model that, that they're using the states, um, you know, and, and, and the federal government. So there's, there's a whole chain of, of how they, they work, but, you know, here we're talking about the distribution side of it. So it'd be the pharmacies, health departments, uh, physicians, hospitals. Okay. So what's interesting is we just now, as we think about mapping out our solution, a whole new concept just start, started to emerge in our, in our model, and we'll call it go-to-market strategies. Okay. And, and yes about and yes about the products. Let's just list the the three major ones. Uh, the you know Pfizer, Moderna, and and Johnson and Johnson. As so, while we're, so while we're at it, okay. So this is now becoming a COVID analysis. So how do you spell Pfizer? What how do you spell it again? P P F I Z E R. Okay. All right. And Moderna. It's M O. Moderna. Moderna. All right. And Johnson and Johnson, just J and J. Yeah. Okay. So those are the different products, right? So, um, so we have these products, and let's go over here. I'm going to show you how to do something in just a minute. So those are products. Let's just keep with our brainstorming mode. As you're thinking about this, you know, you've got bigger, bigger players like the federal government, 
and it's, you know, we can deal with typos later. I'll show you how to fix that too. But we'll see the federal government is over here. And then you've got um, um, different- the, fe the federal government is in charge of, 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 the, um, of the distribution, but the states are responsible for the allocations. Okay, so this is, see how I'm now taking some notes here too. Again, one of the wonderful things with Tinderbox, unlike uh, say a PowerPoint file or other mind mapping software that you'd be doing this in, you couldn't, you know, they're primarily just giving you the visual little box, but they're not letting you then take notes about that too. So for example, now I can copy and paste this one and call it state, states and states uh, in charge of allocation. Uh, and then we've got pharmacies are in charge of that and the pharmaceutical uh, companies, uh, manufacturers. Okay. Yeah, I would just list them as manufacturers and then list, list Pfizer and, and Moderna and, and yeah, Johnson. So, so again, so here's an interesting thing. So this is what I found when I was doing my, when I was initially thinking about uh, analysis. Well, one in this, we, we very well could want to call J and J Moderna and Pfizer the product, but these, these are the companies and their product is what, because it's the Moderna COVID-19 is the, because these, these companies make a lot of different things other than Correct. COVID. Correct. Right. So that's the kind of thing that you want to be thinking about that as well. All right. So it sounds like uh, we're now getting into the next layer of analysis. So let's going to move over here uh, and we're just going to put this whole go to market strategy and like other key players as part of our in in industry analysis over here for the time being. And we can come back to that later. Right. Because we just now know we're going to kind of carve that out as a, as a, as a section we can deal with later. Um, now, now that we've gotten to this point, what we're seeing here is a, an organization structure that's kind of coming to coming to bed. We have organizations, we have products, we have those products have features, those products have benefits. Um, we've got a, some example companies uh, in the healthcare industry, particularly J and J um, use cases. Um, we have um, you know market sectors, which we haven't really even defined well yet, but those market sectors could be. Um, consumer, could be business to business, could be, I don't know your industry or what, um, you know, or in this case, it could be, um, um, you, know, uh, you know, hot, you know, you know, how do you define the sectors in your industry? Is it like hospitals? Is it, um, you know, doctor's offices, you know, like where, where are things being sold? Like in my world, it's banks, retailers, insurance companies is where I sell my products. Re, you know, direct to retail, direct to consumer, those kinds of things. So you'll want to be kind of thinking about how you court, how you would organize what's, you know, the sectors um, that, that you define your customers, but those are attributes that we can, we can talk about later. Okay. Now the next step in your, in our industry mapping is I would say we'd want to quickly start getting into prototyping because what we've now started to do is we're talking about, you're wanting to start putting attributes and definitions to these different groups. Um, so let me show you a quick way and how we can go about doing that. So for those that are watching, we want to call uh, and create what we call prototypes. Now, these are all prototypes that I've, I've created as a template in my own file. So for now, I'll tell you how I, I tend to start with an existing one. So everything above the line is what's in a standard Tinderbox file. And I'm going to go ahead and I always often create the person. Now, here's the other interesting thing. So we've just created where to, so over here, it dropped the um, prototype folder. Uh, for person and because we just built in a built-in prototype. For those that are watching and, and, and it is a prototype is essentially a template, if you will, that you can apply to a, any note in your system to have it represent a particular look and feel. Um, so as we think about the nature of a note, and this is really important, especially in the context of us doing industry analysis. If I look at a note, well, what's a note, right? A note is, you know, and I often like to think about notes as like an, like an atom you know, or a cell. A note is nothing more than a membrane that is containing a bunch of attributes. And from the very start, the attributes of that, uh, that are contained within that cell is a name, AKA note, and a text field, basically the space within that note. Both of these are called attributes. And in Tinderbox attribute lore, 
This is dollar sign name. And this area here is dollar sign text. Okay, so that's what a note is. And then we can start, uh, and then when you apply an attribute to that note, you're essentially going to apply shape and color attributes, uh, you know, uh, elements, which are just yet other definitions of your attributes, um, as well as um, being able to determine what attributes you wanna have displayed. So you'll see here, we've added in the person attribute. So if I now go ahead and right mouse click here and add per you know, and apply the person attribute to this note, you'll see that the note's color has changed. You'll see its shape has changed and it also displayed standard system attributes, full name, uh, organization, et cetera, in the note. Now, every single note has every single attribute already um, instantiated in it. So for example, if I go over to Pfizer here and I manually type in organization, I can display the organization attribute on this note and you'll see it says there, and it just so I'm, I'm happening, happening to, to display it there. Now watch what happens here. Uh, what's the name of, let's say we'll call this uh, organization and we'll give it a name, we'll call it Pfizer. Okay, and then, so what I've essentially done now is I've um, added the attribute organization to this note called Pfizer, and I've given the value of that uh, um, uh, attribute for that particular note, Pfizer. Now remember, every note has every note has every attribute, and every attribute can look up the values that are associated to that attribute across all notes. So if I go back to this note here, and we're going to now change this note, and we're going to call it Pfizer Executive, Pfizer. Uh, we'll call it you know John Doe, and John Doe, and we'll type in the word John Doe here, and John Doe is works for the company called Pfizer. Now I could manually type in the company Pfizer here, or if I go here, you'll see here, Pfizer is already immediately available in that dropdown because it's the, the value of Pfizer is associated somewhere in this note with the attribute organization. And so that value now becomes immediately accessible to all other notes. So I don't have to type it back in. I can just go ahead and hit there. And so now I have John Doe is related to that company Pfizer. Does that make sense? Which also, by the way, makes it makes me realize that we forgot another really important um, container associated with managing our organizational structure, and that container is people, right? Because every industry has people, right? And so what we can do is just go take John Doe in here and now drop him in there. Right? And so as, as you meet new people, you can just start thinking about new people, you can just drop them in, into that note. You were gonna say something? Yeah, I was going to say that, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, you don't need to be thinking about all of this all at one time. So as as we go, you can you can develop these prototypes, you can develop as much of the organization as you need to as you go. So this is just one way to do it. Because yeah, exactly, exactly. And I'm just kind of incrementally developing it as I'm thinking through that process. But well, the one thing I want to be able to do from the very beginning, Tom, is there'll be a lot more prototypes and a lot more refinement that we want to do. But before we start creating a bunch of new companies and a bunch of new notes, incrementally though, if you're like, okay, I'm going to need a person prototype, but I'm also going to need a prototype for organizations, one for products and one for features. Why? Because I'm going to want to display different attributes for each one of those. I'm gonna to wanna to be able to visually see them as maybe having a different uh, color or a different shape in the map so that I can quickly distinguish, oh, those are products, these are organizations, you know, people are these green circles. And so, you know, and again, you can add prototypes in any, is, in whenever you want, but the second you start feeling like you need them, such as in this case, I have three companies now where I wanna start putting information to I don't want to keep repeating that and I don't want to make it manually. So I, I'm going to quickly create a, an organization prototype for that. So let me jump, jump in and show you how we, how we do that. So I'm going to go ahead and type in a uh, prototype and I'm going to call it organization. Okay. So we have a prototype called organization. Now let's go ahead and um, uh, uh, what I want to do here. I'm going to go ahead and hit command one to open up the, 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 um, uh, file menu. I, I can just do it this way. I can, you have our document expector, or I can just click on the note itself. And let's say we want our organizations to be a slightly different shape. Let's have our organizations um, be round as well. 
but we want them to be a different color. So let's go over here and let's say our organizations are Scion. Make sense? We can always change them later, right? Um, and the other thing we want to do, just so we can distinguish it and have some fun with it too, is let's say organizations have the badge of a little uh, like industry thing. There you go. So our organizations will have a little company icon there too, so we can see that. All right. Now, what kind of um, value or attributes do you want to be, have displayed under organization? We want obviously organization. Okay. Um, we want a uh, product, right? So because we want the products that are related to that organization. Um, we want, uh, what else do we want there? We want people that we have associated with that organization. Um, uh, we have sector. Uh, what else might we want to know about an organization? Perhaps region, um, address. Uh, what else would you want to know about an organization? The different categories, for example, in this particular case, it's, it's for COVID or infectious disease. A lot of these have different, different uh, products for different types of conditions, right? Okay, but let's, let's think about it. So we'll say keywords. So they're going to be somehow associated with those keywords. Um, but that could be also a sector terminology that you're trying to get at um, is one thing. But I think that's enough for now. Yeah. So let's go ahead and click away. And so you'll see some of those attributes already existed, namely address and organization. The rest of these are now user attributes. <clears throat> so we're going to make that a set. Uh, the reason why we make it a set is because we want to have a list of items that are discrete. I don't want the same product being listed twice. If it's a list, it would be listed multiple times. Likewise, I want the region to be set. Most of the time when you're doing these things, you know, like it's only gonna be in a region once, not in the region twice. And then we'll have uh, that. So what we have created these new um, organizations and it also created uh, people. Must People must be a system attribute that we don't wanna leverage. So we'll call this one uh, employees, con have a context. Or person, I think we named person before, so yeah, yeah, that's why you know I think people's a system attribute. So let's just go ahead and create context, right? Okay, so we're gonna you know so essentially what we're saying is for every organization we've got an organization which is its name, um, and we also have its name too, but that's something different. We have a product, we have sector, region, address, etc. So let's go back to our industry map, and now here this is going to become the container for our organization. So I'm going to just go here and I'm going to give it the little organization icon to be cute like that. Uh, and then on this, since it's con a container, we're going to put an on add in. Okay. And this is going to be our first attempt at using action code uh, within Tinderbox. Now, what Tinderbox allows you to do in terms of action code is, um, and it's basically a semantic utility, sort of the light from my windows coming in is that um, this concept called action code allows you to transform your notes um, using uh, Tinderbox, um, a, a Tinderbox scripting language. And those notes, that action code, I'm now hit command one to open up this file. That action code um, for, uh, for a particular note can be displayed in this little kind of Death Star icon element when you open up the inspector of Tinderbox. And it can be used in a variety of different ways. Action code can be used in actions like an on add, or in an agent query, which we'll demonstrate in a minute. It can be used in, the, in agent queries. It can also be used for rules, on removes, edicts, as well as edicts. And the difference between a rule and an edict is a rules happen you know, near, you know, near instantaneously very often, and edicts happen, happen every once in a while. They're a low processed based uh, element. Um, and then uh, the other place action code can be used, and I'll just show you really quick here is in links called on action links. And we're gonna be demonstrating that in just a minute. Okay, so for the time being, what I'm going to do here is I want to say on add prototype prototype equals, and then here's another example of incremental formalization of Tinderbox. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot when I created my organization, I actually wanted to be uh, put a P in front of my organ of my prototype name, so that uh, because I very well may have another note somewhere in the file called organization, which I do. It's called the container. So I want my prototype names to be um, 
unique and I might as well have them be shorter too. It doesn't really matter, right? So I'm gonna call this P org. So now if I could, because here you'll see, I've got another note named organization. I don't want my prototype note and my container note to have the same name. So if I go there, I'll go ahead now and I'll just say quote P org and quote semicolon, hit return. So now essentially what we've done is created an on add. And if I go here, you'll see that that on add now exists right here. And so this just shows you the different elements of the utility of, of Tinderbox. And essentially what we're saying is in this attribute on add, what this means is now, whenever I add anything to this note, this, this container called organization, I want you to apply the P or prototype to that note. And so if, give me an example. If I go ahead now and drop in J and J here. Uh, why didn't it not work? What did I do wrong? Let me see. Whoops. I want to re-undo J and J. I can edit that out one week later. So if I go, did I spell prototype wrong? Prototype equals P org. Huh. That's bizarre. Oh, that's an action. You, you didn't put put it, uh, you didn't create the on add it piece did. to that. No, I did. That's where on ads go for a note. Oh, up there, yes. I was just looking down here. You're right. Type equals P org. That is so bizarre. Why doesn't that work? Oh, interesting. It still sees it as organization. It doesn't see it as, oh, that's why. Because I changed it. There we go. Now it'll work. And this is good for everyone else for the note. There we go. So you see now it has increment, incrementally turned it on. And then if I delete it and paste it back in, it, that now goes there too. So again, for the, I was planning on like cutting this out of the video, but why? Because that demonstrates a great learning lesson for using Tinderbox and that you think it's gonna work. And then more often than not, you realize it's not Tinderbox that caused the problem, it's you. You did something wrong. It was a typo or something of that nature. So you essentially now see that I've applied the um, attribute uh, P org to all of these. Now you'll notice though, the Pfizer one, while well, J and J and Moderna got the actual prototype for, um, uh, for P org, Pfizer did not. And the reason why it did not is uh, a, core, a key in, uh, element in Tinderbox is what's called inheritance. Tinderbox does not want to overwrite notes where you've chosen to customize the display attributes or values within notes. So the way to reset that, there's a number of ways to reset that. You can come here and hit reset and that will reset uh, the J and J note to that. Another way to go about doing that is here. You can go to quick, quick stamps and you'll see this idea. Of, I'm gonna select display attributes. And if you go here, you'll actually see the, the, this note is, an, is getting its inheritance from itself. It's assigned to this note. If I go ahead and reset that, you'll see it's now going to inherit it from the, from the P org attribute and I can hit apply and you'll now see it's automatically now reset itself back to the attribute of, um, of, uh, of the prototype. Make sense? So that's really cool. So now essentially what we've done is we've created um, a, uh, um, uh, you know, organizational companies. Now, one thing I do, and this is a trick I have when I'm creating this kind of analysis, is I very quickly find that when I'm doing this, more often than not, companies will name their product the same as their company name, right? So how do I, if, if every note can have their same, the same name, how do I distinguish between a company that has, um, the, the, you know, say the product Pfizer and the product uh, company Pfizer. So this, this is how I've, my, my approach for doing that. And so let me show you that. Okay. Yeah. So if I come here, one is, we're gonna add a type here, by the way. That's another field that I often like for, uh, for organizations. And I'm now gonna create that type. We're gonna create it a set and this type is going to be or or organization. Okay. The other thing I want to type in here is I'm going to create one called short title. Okay. And short title will be a string. 
So what I've now essentially done here is now we're going to create, while we're at it, we're going to go create another one. We'll call it P product. And a product will have a name. A product has a price. You know, like a, um, like uh, a, uh, uh, a company, a product could be in a region. Now a company might be in multiple regions, but the product might only be sold in one particular market, for example. So having that region distinction is really important. Um, what other, uh, what other things might a product have? Uh, features. So a product may have specific features. Um, a product may have use cases. Right? Yes. Okay. So we'll go ahead and change that. So we're going to create these. Uh, a string and feature is we'll make that a set. Okay. So we've created yet another um, uh, note called product. And just to distinguish it, maybe we give it a little icon too. We'll go ahead and pick one randomly. I don't know. Want to pick one? Just for fun, yeah. We'll call product. We'll give make products a little, um, yeah. So we'll distinguish products as with a little petri dish, um, and it's, uh, apropos for the medical industry, uh, if you will. Um, so that will be products. And so now, for the time being, we can always update them later. We have some products. We have the, um, and so I'm going to say prod, and then I'm going to say uh, Moderna. Vaccine. Okay, that's one product. And then we've got prod, and then we have the uh, Pfizer. Thing. And then we have another one, we'll call it prod, and we have the JNJ, and it's actually the COVID 19. Okay, right. Uh, and we can go ahead and update those. And you can change these product names anytime you want. Okay, and then like we did before, we're gonna go here and we're doing on add. And we'll say um, on add, uh, on add uh, prototype equals uh, products. And let's see if I got my spelling right this time around. Did I? Yep, I did. Okay. So we've now got these products. Okay. And we're just been brainstorming along, you know, and that's how we start building our, 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 our program. Likewise, we can do that for features and we can do that for benefits. Now, here's one of the little tricks that I found insanely useful when doing this, because now we want to start making linkages and associations. Um, so if we go in here, and now we want to say, uh, you know, the J and J product is related to the uh, the organization J and J and J, correct? And we want to be able to, to to link those ideas. So here's something else we've missed. So if I pop over to this tab, and now we're in, now you see how we're in outline view. This is where outline view and map view become really, really useful. Uh, and what I tend to do here when I'm in this model is I'll create a sector. I'll, I'll create a little separator down here. I'll call this back end, and we'll have all of our prototypes down here. Um, and we'll then start organizing our groups. And so we may even want to like you know, let's create another folder. We'll call it lookups. Okay, so lookups will be part of our back end, and in our lookups, we're going to have geography. Um, we're going to have general notes, well, use cases, features, um, sectors is going to end up becoming a lookup, I would suspect. Um, you know, then we can start organ. You know, you know, and then again, what's nice about doing it this way too, when you compare between the map view and the look of view, it also helps you realize. Well, we've got a bunch of uh, of these elements that we just kind of maybe want to put under the go to market strategy for now. And I'm just hitting the tab key to get these things organized under there. Delete that one, and now you can see that we you know topics is going to be 
uh, a sector. Um, you've got this idea called features, products, maybe go here, benefits go there. We, can don't, we don't need, the summaries is basically general notes. We can do that, uh, bundle into that, go to market strategies, people, you know, impressions is probably gonna be part of general notes. We can delete that from now. And that's just an overall name. So maybe we change this one to a, uh, separator, there you go. So now we've basically now got a, a tighter anal organization of, uh, uh, of our industry analysis. We have our industry analysis and the backend elements um, that we're gonna be using for managing this notes. And if we then go look at our um, map view, you'll see, yeah, we're gonna slowly but surely get our mapping a little bit more cleaned up. What do you think it's so far? I think it's great. Okay. I think uh, the other thing that I was gonna mention is that I, I typically on the back end automatically put uh, another container for, for agents and all my agents go in that area. All and right. That's just the way I do it. I love it. So let's do it. We'll call it agents. Now, the other thing that I find really useful for agents, and maybe we can put the uh, agents here for now. And then if you look at our outline, we'll pop over here and show people how to do that. So you see how our agent showed on the bottom list. So maybe we move those up there if we want. Okay. Now, just to show people too, now watch happens. If I move this agents out and I put it into here, you'll see that agents will have disappeared off of the map view because they just got embedded into the lookups. And then if I go ahead and move them back out, um, you'll see, like I just did, they, they, you know, they got moved out, you know, over here. So you can kind of, as you move things around your map view and your outline view can become somewhat um, disassociated uh, in turn because the tool is going to help you understand where all of that's going. So let's go ahead and just put our agents over here and get it reorganized. And you now see we've got our go-to-market strategies. We'll put that over here with general notes. Yeah, you know, maybe general notes, for example, becomes your scratch pad or something like that so that you can later then organize that. And geographies is now part of your lookup tables. Okay, so now we're slowly but surely getting a uh, industry structured uh, incremental uh, element here. Now what we want to do is to start um, organizing this in a, in a, in a little bit uh, more fashion because now what we want to start is, is to do is to start creating linkages and to pass data back and forth because one of the powerful things with Tinderbox is um, the ability for the um, solution to be able to help pass data back and forth um, uh, to facilitate the populating of information and, and organizational elements. So for example, the name of the note is J&J, &J, but the organization field is not populated with J&J. &J. And we essentially want the organizational field to become a list that we can leverage later. So what I will often do in that instance is I will pop over here, I'll open up outline view, and now I'm gonna say, what I wanna do is I always want an, uh, an edict running. Uh, and, what I can, and what I want this edict to, to do is I want it to say organization equals name, okay? And so by doing that, the name of the, the, name of the note is always gonna become the organization. And then that way, if, for example, if I've spelled a name wrong, it's going to get updated. So now if I go back and I look at the organization notes, you'll see now that the, you know, the name of these notes is now organization. And so if I later want to again say this is related to, oh, now look, here's another opportunity for incremental formalization. If I go to product, I need organization, right? Because every product is being offered by an organization. Now, if I go back up here, you'll see these notes now, because I changed their prototype, these notes all now have the organization attribute available to them. And you'll see now here, all of those organizations are now all available because I had the edict automatically populating them from the organization names. So I could go ahead and select these if I wanted to, but I don't necessarily want to yet because what I want to now show you is something that I found to be incredibly useful um, for when we're doing um, uh, this type of work. And before I do that, I want to show you one other thing. 
Uh, I'm going to do it from which note? I want to get my own research note one. And let me pop this up. I'm going to grab one other little trick that I found really useful in my own note taking. But I, I never remember the regex, so I need to pull it from another file. So that's my own industry map that I've got going on with other over 550 companies that I've mapped out throughout this process. Um, but one of the things I want to pull from it, oh, it's not this one that I want to be able to do it in. Let me do this real quick. This file is what I need. Okay. And what I want to do is from the file name, give me a second while I pull this over. Is that a different file or There we go. All right, so here's another trick. I've just pulled this from my other file. So let me show you this other trick. Remember when I added that, um, that short title to a file? Well, what I like to do is I like to add pre prefixes to whenever I do names. So I wanna have organization like this, okay? So that way I know this is the org Pfizer, this is the org Moderna versus possibly the product Pfizer, the product Moderna. And this is especially helpful when companies are naming their products the same name as their company. Now, the challenge though, is when we wanna link these together, we don't necessarily wanna be passing this org um, uh, element back and forth between the, the pro uh, particular files. So now watch this little trick that I figured out with the help of our illustrious Mark Anderson from the, um, from the community. So you noticed how I added this edict org organization equals name. Now here's a little trick, by the way, if you hold the option key down and you hit enter, that creates a line break in your uh, action code. So now I can go ahead and paste some more action code from my no uh, another file. Now look what I'm doing here. What I'm doing here is, is um, a Tinderbox supports what's called regex, a regular expression. And regular expression is a method for, let me demonstrate it using BB Edit. So if I open up BB Edit, which is a text editor, and we're gonna create a new file in BB Edit. So I'm gonna go ahead and say new. And I, just for the sake of ease of argument, we're gonna take these three items here and we're gonna drop them in here, okay? And BB Edit has this, and text in uh, computer language, this, you've got this concept called regular expression. And what regular expression allows you to do is to essentially search text to match patterns. And then if you match those patterns in the text, then you're able to um, you know, manipulate them and, and, and coordinate and organize them. So let me show you, for, for example, doing that. We're gonna grab from one of my other files, this regular expression code, and we're gonna go back here and drop that regular expression code here. And then I'm gonna delete this. And then I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen. So if I grab right here, this is the regular expression, or this, I shouldn't say the, but this is a regular expression right here this up to that point. And if I go ahead and copy this here, you'll see what's happening. So what, uh, what's, uh, what, what it's doing is it's going through and looking for, um, in this case, it's looking for the first space. So this regular expression is basically saying, start at the beginning of the line, look for the first space, and then copy all of that information in, in, into the first place. And then it's going to say, look for the next line and the parentheses and regular expressions create what's called groups. So you'll see group zero is the group of the entire line. Group one is the first item that it captured. Group two is, the, uh, is, is kind of the, the, the whole group of code that it's finding. And then group three is the actual name that we want. 
And I believe because we probably got a line break in here in this text somewhere. Yeah, you know, let me just go ahead here and let's just say we're gonna go like that. So if I delete all of the language and I then just look at this regular expression, we'll do it again. That should work just fine. So now if we go back to our Tinderbox file and we're running this code, let's see if it actually worked. Okay, what I wanted to be able to do is populate my short title field with dollar sign two. Okay, and I might need to debug this later. Um, but what we wanna do is have it process this and show up in dollar sign two. It's working in my other file, so I'm not sure what's going on there. This might be something we fix later in the video. Oh, because I have it incomplete. Yeah, I have an incomplete code. That's what's going on. There we go. Okay. Right. I'll have to fix the regex later, but essentially what I wanted to do is delete this space and only copy the name into the short title, because then that way that will populate our, essentially our lookup list um, for all um, companies. But for some reason, this is not working for me right now and I'll fix that later. Um, okay. Now, the other thing I wanted to demonstrate with you, is, or we'll give it a second and see if it can figure it out. What's going on? Name short title. This should work. If name dot contains. Give me a second. Huh. Do you need to use I contains? No, I shouldn't have to. Let me, uh, let me look here. Let me look at this one. I'm going to click on my other file here. So it's project. Yeah, let me just get, let me pull it from one that I know that's working. Yeah, that should totally work. I don't know why it's not. It's spell short title wrong? No. Nope. And let's see, make it bigger than one. All right, we'll deal with that in a minute. Because here, let's try this. Okay. So we want to do from the beginning of the line, okay, select all. See that, so you see how the regex found the space? I don't, I'm, I'm not an expert at regex yet. So let's see, and we'll say from the beginning of the line, find, Let's just break it up. I'm gonna break it up one piece at a time. So is that gonna do this? Yeah, there we go. And then what's this one doing here? This one is that's the whole item. Okay, that's all we need. That, that's all we need. That might have some overkill in my file. So if I do, let's do maybe this. There we go. There you go. Okay, so let me go ahead and fix that in my file here. If I go back here, fix this there, hit return. 
There. Okay. So now we've got the pre the prefix not prefix knocked away, and we're able to then automatically start populating this short title. So that's going to be able to help us reference things quite a bit. Now let me show you why I did that. So now what I want to do is do another interest reaction. So I want to be able to link this product. And by the way, for the product prototype, since we've done that, we should probably put that in our product prototype too. So then when we look here and we can add the short title to there as well, short title for product. And if you go back here, you'll now see, look, the, uh, you know, by the time we've gotten back, the short title has now already automatically been populated and has dropped the prod. So now we can, the reason why we do that is now we can start referencing that information. Now watch what happens here. Let's say now we want to associate the product J and J with the organization J and J. Okay. Well, the, in order to do that, we want to call do what's called link actions. And so I want to create a new link action and I'm going to call it product. Okay. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to say products. I'm going to say, um, let's say organization source equals product source. Okay. And let's just do that for, we'll, we'll do that one first just to practice that. And then I also want to say, actually, while I'm at it, so organization source equals product source. And then we're going to say, um, organization source equals product destination. Sorry. Nope. Organization source equals, oh, I know what I want to do. Equals organization source. I didn't get that. Sorry. Could stop. you try? Okay. Organization source equals organization destination. So what we want to do for this first one is we want to say, when I link a product to an organization, I want the organization's name to be populated in the product's organization attribute. So now I can start moving data back and forth between these notes to make it easier to manage them. And then what I want to say is I want the product, I want the name, actually let's do this, sorry. I want the ti short title, um, I want the short title of the um, destination to equal the name, the, no, sorry. Ah, I want the short title of the source to equal the product of the destination. Got it. That's what I want. So essentially what I'm now doing is when I link these two items together, I want to say, when you link these two notes and give it the link type product, I want the organization of the source note to be, to be uh, labeled the, or, the, des the organ uh, I want the, the, instead of other words, what I'm saying is take the, uh, the destination, the, the, the destination notes organization name uh, that's in or, or, the value that's in organization and apply it to the source note, to the product note. Likewise, I want to have the uh, short title of the product note become, uh, be added to the product set in the destination. That's what I'm doing. So it might be easier to demonstrate what happens here. Now, watch Yeah. That. So Michael, I always get confused about which one's the desk. So which way when are we going? Here, here, here's, here's the way to think about it. So if you remember the way action code works, what this is saying is whatever's on the right side of the equation, make that, you know, make whatever's on the left side of the equation equal to what's on the right. So that's the, in, from a formula semantic perspective. So what I'm saying is make organization source equal to organization destination, make product destination equal the short title source. The source is the note you're, you're coming from. The destination is the note you're linking to. So with this particular link type, 
what I'm saying is I'm always going to be wanting to link from product to a company. You know, if I were doing it the other way, um, I would, I'd reverse them and you could have two different link types. And what's important for link typing within a uh, Tinder is to realize is every link is unidirectional. It only goes one way. Right. Whereas a lot of times with, uh, um, mapping tools, you can actually have like, like the arrows showing up on both ends of a link showing multi-directional links. Well, Tinderbox, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense because what we're trying to do is use links to demonstrate paths. So one link's going this way and then another link can go the other way and you could have different, different types of information passing back and forth. Um, does that answer your question? Yes. Okay, so now watch what happens. If I go ahead and link J&J &J to Modern, uh, to J&J company, right? It's yeah. gonna pop up and say, what kind of link type do you want? Well, I wanna use the product link type, okay? And you'll notice here that I've got, it's going from product J and J to org J and J, okay? So right. once I create link, look what happens. Organization automatically got populated and the product J and J COVID-19 got automatically populated. Now I did something wrong here in that the J and J short time. Oh, interest again. Look what. Remember, Tinderbox does exactly what you tell it to do. <laughs> so I had it linked to organization and not short title. And so if you look here, I got organization org J and J. That's not what I wanted, right? So if I go here, I should say org source equals short title uh, equals short title. Destination. So now, if we go and redo that, and again, to, to make the link um, link attribute show, you hit Command Seven to show the link the link menus. So I, that way, I can delete that note and do it again. And so that way, now when I do it, uh, I should have overwritten it. Let's see what's going to happen. Let me delete this out of here real quick. So I'm saying organization source equals, oh, because it didn't, um, my link title didn't save, I didn't hit enter, equals short, short title. Okay, now it's saved. Now if we go do that again, there you go, J and J, right? So that, go ahead, please. Uh, Michael, Michael, you, you might want to kind of, for people that are watching it, they're going to, they're not going to have that product link and it's because we did it earlier in the video. So you may want to, you know, that's how we created that link. So you may want to kind of remind them about that. So, no, let's go through that. So what, what do you want me to remind? What do you mean? Well, you know, cause it's a link type. It's, it's, it's one that we created. The product is yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah, so, but remember I deleted it. So for example, so I created, so uh, let's review for all of those that watch this, what we just did, right? So earlier in the video, we created this, this link type called product. And I'm using the action code to, to actually create, you know, because again, remember what Tinderbox action code lets you do is transform your notes. So I'm essentially letting, saying in the action code link, when I perform a link that is type product, execute this action. And the action we executed are saying, make the organization source equal the, the short title destination and make the product destination equal the short title source. So in other words, make the product, the name of the, you know, add the name of the product to the product's attribute in the organizations and add the name of the organization to the organization field of the product is essentially what this is doing. And so if you look here, you'll see that's, that's exactly what happened. J and J COVID nineteen vaccine is in product on the organization, and uh, J uh, and uh, J and J is now in the product organization. Now let me show you another example. Let's create a new product, and we'll call it Prod J and J um, new vac new new vaccine. Right? We don't know what it is. We're just going to randomly new vaccine. Now, if we now link that one, and I, I, let me show you how to link it in a different way. Let's say I'm at J and J now. And I create this, okay? And now here's another reason why I use the um, prefix methodology. Because right now, all I wanna do is be searching for products. 
So if I start typing the word pro the you know pro pro product, it will automatically just find the product notes for me. That's the value of using that that naming prefix uh, element. It's really really powerful when you have say a thousand notes. I'm not looking for every I'm not looking for every note. I'm looking for notes that are the prefix of product, or I'm looking for the notes that are prefix of organization. Make sense? Do and yes. do you kind of kind of agree with that logic? Yes, no, this is beautiful. This is exactly right. So you use a prefix to, to almost like filter yes. your list. It's a predefined filter, but by using the rule and the regex to strip it out, it doesn't, it allows you to, through the short title mechanism to get the pure name without that prefix, uh, prefixed filter. That one, that one took me a while to figure out, by the way, for those that are watching here, if it sounds self-evident, it probably took me a week and a half or more to learn how to do all of those pieces. Um, so, and then it took me probably a month after that to actually really understand what I was doing. Uh, but now watch what happens here. So we wanna now link the new product that we've just made to J&J &J, and I hit link. Now remember, you, and this is something you're gonna have to remember. I'm gonna click product, but remember our product link type, it's been designed for not the, the, the other way around, not from organization to product, but from product to organization. So all you need to do is click this and now I can make the association, okay? Now watch what's happened here from an incremental formalization perspective. Um, when we did our product type here, it overwrote. So let's do, if I do the linking again, you'll see what's gonna happen is it's gonna overwrite that. So we have a problem. So this, we go back to here and we go to our product and you'll see that we've created our product as a set. Ah, so our product as a set is correct. Now, again, lesson 101, when you're doing Tinderbox working work like what we're doing right now, 99% of the time, Tinderbox is doing exactly what you're telling it to do. And if, it's, and if you're not getting what you expect, it's probably because you did something wrong, not because Tinderbox is broken. So what did I do wrong? Uh, and that's not a bad thing. It's just part of the learning. We're saying Tinderbox organization short title, but in this one, what I want to do is say uh, plus, so product product source plus the short title. So now watch what happens. So now if I go back to my linking and I now go to J and J and I hit this and I say, okay, we want new vaccine, hit link, do the reverse like we just showed you click product type. Now watch what happens. It doesn't, um, uh, product destination equals product source plus short title. Oh, destination. Again, incremental formalization. This is kind of where the practice comes into play. And you can go ahead and delete these once you made too many. You know, you're, you're seeing that. Now watch what happens. So now if I go here, so I've got my J and J and we'll just, let's start over because I drink, I deleted all of the links. So now if I start over and I say, we want to be linking the new product vaccine to J and J and want it to be product type. So that is going to populate the, uh, did we break it again? Product destination equals product destination plus product source plus short time source. Okay, so let's go here. J and J product. And then we'll go here. We'll make sure that so product got populated. And now we go type a new vaccine here. And link type products. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now you see it worked because now what this has done is by adding the plus here. So what we're telling it to do is take the, you know, because you know, again, we're, what we're trying to do is update the product des destination, which is basically the, the product attribute in company. And what we're saying is if something in company already exists, take that and add to it the short title. So now we can link multiple products to a company through that methodology. So now if I want to add another J&J &J product, prod J&J, new vaccine three, 
And let's say we go here now and we say prod new vaccine, oops, three link, go like this, product. You see it's now added to the list. New three, 19, all that. So you can have as many products as you want associated with a company and the company J and J is associated with all these three products. Okay. And then that's later, great. what? I said, that's great. Okay. And then later when you want to run your agents and let's say we want to move our agents up here because I like having agents on top personally. Um, we'll move our agents up here. And let's say we now want to run an agent and we'll call it um, prod search. Okay. And then personally, I like to have, I want to pull in from one of my other notes. We got to go. Yeah. But you're okay. yeah. So I got to go in a few minutes and we can pick up later. But if I go here, check this out. I've got a agent prototype that I, and this is one of the beautiful things at Tinderbox too. When you have other Tinderbox files, you can copy and paste prototypes that you have in other files and um, bring them in. So I like using this, uh, what I call this agent prototype. And what we need, want to do at real quick before we're done is we'll go in and add the code prototype. Okay. And we're going to make this, um, this one agent. So now by doing that, we have essentially, okay. So now I can write in here because I applied the code prototype to the agent. I can actually write code in here without messing up the, sm the smart quotes that allows me to use this as a scratch pad. And now I also have the agent query action and priorities displayed. So now it makes it a lot easier for me to be able to, to, to run my agents. Okay. Um, and, and I like the little heartbeat thingy because it shows that it's like living and working and always constantly working for me. That's the vision I have here. So now what we want to do is we want to run a quick agent and the agent we want to run is, um, here we'll say is products. Uh, no, we'll say, um, uh, prototype Pro prototype equals, um, uh, P product. And um, organization equals um, J and J. Okay, like that. Paste it in there. Enter. Now, essentially, what that's going to do is going to find all of the companies, all of the products that are coming from J and J. And so, this is how you can uh, incrementally build your map. Um, and then later you can add actions to update those or modify those or refine those. Um, but this is the way you go about doing it. Now, the one last thing I'm going to show you before I leave is this little trick that I developed for myself. We're going to call it Q org. Okay. So we're going to create a new attribute called Q org. It's going to be a string. Now we'll make it a set. Okay. And then we're going to modify this you say dot i contain dot format the reason why we do dot format is we want to turn this into a string and we say i contains and then we then say dollar sign q q org come on q org and we want to say i think it's yeah dollar sign q org so now what we're basically telling Tinderbox is doing is saying, uh, go find all the notes that have prototype product and their organization dot format, a string in the format that actually equals um, whatever the value is in you know, query org. And so we're gonna type J and J here, okay? And so now what it's gonna do is go out and get the value for that, that querying string from there, okay? Um, then there's some other things that we're going to want to do later to demonstrate how to then, you know, uh, basically create a lookup field called organizations. So that this file, you know, this one is always, and I, and I can show you how to do that right now. If we go to edicts, 
and we say um, organization. And actually, what we don't want to do that here, what we could do is do the do it as one giant TBX lookup file. TBX config note. So this is going to be our giant TBX configuration file. And we're going to say organizations equals um, collect children of organization um, name. So essentially what we're trying to do here is actually build a, um, a lookup table on the fly or uh, uh, populate the okay and when, once I get it right what will happen is it will automatically I might have spelled it wrong but equals children uh, oh no it needs it maybe it needs to be a find. Uh, I know what it can mean inside. Inside. Uh, organization, is that right? All right, I'll have to look it up. I'll remember that. I'll, I'll, I'll look it up in a minute. But essentially what we'll do is we'll, we'll calculate that. So then that way, whenever you add a new name, it's automatically added to the organization file. So then that organization becomes a, 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 um, acceptable everywhere. Uh, oh, that's good. That's you know, really good. Yeah. You know, and so the, again, th these are some of the incremental strategies that we're going to want to work on and making that work. Okay. Um, um, but I got to run, but I I'll send you this file. I'll fix those things and I'll send you this file. But this gives you a sense of how we can go about, um, you know, building our industry map. No, this is great. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And, and I think just just understanding that your, your thought process is, is really helpful. Yeah, no, my pleasure. And then you'll do the same thing for features and the same thing for use cases and the same thing for benefits. And you'll just repeat everything we've been doing as you incrementally build and link all of this stuff together. And again, as we demonstrated throughout this video, um, you know, we didn't do it all at once, right? We said, oh yeah, what about this? Oh yeah, what about that? Oh, we tried something, it didn't work. Uh, all right, let's fix it. Um, oh, it did work. Great. Let's move on. It didn't work, but we can't figure out how to fix it now. Let's move on so we don't lose our momentum and we'll come back and fix that later. Right. Yeah. And that's the beauty of Tinderbox is this incremental formalization, this ability to continue just to think and ideate and move and evaluate without necessarily, you know, uh, when you're, especially in the, you're in that early collection phase, then now we're kind of in that collection slash curation phase. Um, and that, that's, again, what just one of the amazing things of this tool. Yeah, the, the thing that I will, uh, you know, kind of comment is that a lot of people, if they can't do something, they get stuck there and it takes, you know, they stop there. But just keep going. If it's not easy, just come back to it later, like like you did. And so, you know, just the idea, just keep your ideas, you know, coming, you know, just just keep writing down your your ideas. And then if you don't know how to do something, whether it be through action code and you have to ask the forum or whatever, you can do that later. Right. And there, and I actually, in a lot of my files, I will, I actually have one, a file and um, often I'll create a note called things to ask, things to ask a forum. Right. And when I get stuck, I'll drop that note. You know, what about, um, what about regex? Right. And I'll just drop it in there. Okay, and so as I'm working, if I get stuck, I'll drop in that thing to ask the forum item so I don't forget it, but then I'll keep working. And then later in the evening, I'll then go ask the forum a bunch of stuff, right? And so that way I can use the community to help me in my project, but when I'm actually getting work done, I'm not getting stuck. And I also don't worry about these errors. I'll fix those later, right? Um, it's, you know, like in this case, it's telling me the agent's not working and, and that's not parsing properly. We'll fix that in a minute. But again, this is the one, this is the way to get to, to get up to speed quickly with, uh, you know, leveraging Tinderbox. And so what I'm going to do is I do have to run. So what I'm going to do is I will fix these, modify our video a little bit and should do an overlay to show people how we fix them. 
and then we'll just move on. And maybe uh, next week we'll uh, do a, a version two of this and we'll keep incrementing on our, on our industry map. But for those that are watching this, I hope you enjoyed this. I mean, you got to see a live working session of two people trying to hack an idea into Tinderbox. And I think we have a fairly functional file. And once I've got the, uh, a couple of those uh, action codes um, uh, you know, fixed up, which I will do before I, I finish publishing this, um, you're gonna have a, a really cool kind of functioning industry mapping file that you'll be able to build off of. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, thank you. All right, everybody, take care, bye-bye.